So we want to talk about looking at sort of linear state equations. So taking the continuous time form, this is the nice generalized form, classic continuous time form. And what we would end up finding is like, what happens when I want to actually look at this as a discrete time form? So you might ask, well, how am I going to go from one to the other? Uh, continuous time has a lot of richness within the whole differential equation system we're building. So we want to really think very carefully about what's possible, you know, about trying to keep as much of those dynamics together. All right. So, you know, if I want to move to sample variables, something you might know if you've done any uh, solutions of differential equations and so forth, you've seen a form of this. But the sort of simple form is I want to move this to sampled variables. So I'm now looking at like at x of n is my, my hope, right? So it's good sort of sample notation versus, can, you know, looking at things in time like I would see above here. And so where now it's going to be times to be related around some sampling time, right? Which is inversely related to a sampling frequency. Well, where do I go with this? Well, if most of this translates across very directly into sampling except for the derivative. Okay, so for this derivative term, I know that I could take an approximation uh, typical of looking at a derivative. There's many different ways to approximate it, but let's just start with the, the obvious starting point of x of t plus some in, in increment in time minus that over delta. And typically we'd expect that this delta would go to zero. We'd like to have that, that spacing be as small as possible, so hopefully I'm doing my sampling sufficiently tight. I might not be, but that's a good idea, right? And so, well, until numerical problems happen digitally, but that's where we begin, right? And so you begin to say, well, what, the, what do the modified equations look like? Well, I'm going to get x of t plus delta minus x of t is then equal to delta times this. Well, this would work out pretty well uh, if I'm looking at this delta and I'm trying, still trying to make sure the timing works. And then I could very quickly just convert everything to this delta being the next time step in the timing there. So it's n plus 1 minus x of n. Still this delta, which is really now going to be a prefactor to show how much, how small this is in terms of how things are changing. That's kind of relevant here as we're going to dig into this. And then say, well, then, and then the y of n, which is just basically gathering what happens with the, with the input and the state variable and combining them out, looks about the same. The nice thing is when I start to look at a state formulation in this form, most of what I would create up here will be appropriate down here. Great, okay, so no, no difficulty there. And yet here's what happens and often gets kind of missed on some of the history here. A lot, you know, a lot of books and resources will typically then say, ah, well, let me just make this simple. I'm just going to say it's x of t plus delta is equal to all of this. And you think, now hold on a second, that's not the same as this, which is, you know, what comes from the original formulation. And if I took this and I properly wrote it, it would have all of the, you know, n plus 1 and then everything of n. But it doesn't take long to immediately go, wait a minute, this and this are not the same and not the same dynamics. Now, I could get there by moving the x sub n over and taking the delta times a sub n and that x sub n and pulling them all together into a new a sub n. I could do that. And that's actually partially what's going on. Um, and that's actually important when you look at the various properties of what's happening here because their stability is different. In the one case, right, for the continuous time form as well as this, stability is when the eigenvalues of A are, are less than zero, at least sort of generic stability on the system for itself without stabilizing it. And you usually think about Laplace transforms and these continue, you know, related to the continuous time form, and it kind of still mostly applies in here. In the discrete time form, though, it's a little different because now it really is going to be Z-transform with its properties. And it also says that the, for stability of the system alone, the eigenvalues of A must be less than 1 for, the fixed, for fixed A. And so what it means is that A needs to stay small. Remember that A is already going to start off with basically unity with the X of N. So we have to have things, so I still need A to have been negative, but I need it to still stay small because if it starts to get too big on the other side, I've got a problem. So I have to watch these different pieces and parts of the dynamics. Um, and stuff sometimes will get slipped in, and you have to really watch the difference between these two modes. 
um, between the continuous and the discrete form.